All right, I'm ready to go. I've got a cup of tea with me. Greetings, everybody, all you groovy people. This is the Blue Dragon. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. This week is part one of a two-part video that I'm doing. I am showing from start to finish just an example of what I do with one piece. Like, so far I've done, uh, you know, like I'll do a sketch of a page, I'll do the inking. Most often I'll do the inking in a video because that's easy to record. Um, I have done some screen tone videos and I've done one, two, two traditional art videos. Yeah, two. The Green Man and the uh, Autumn Queen of Diamonds. So with this, I none of those I've done from start to finish, so this two-part video, I don't know if that's even enough to call a series. I guess it is in a series. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So for this week, we're going to see the sketch portion and the inking portion of this image. The sketch part took about an hour and five minutes approximately, whereas the inking only took about 29 minutes, almost a half half an hour just about. So it's a lot quicker to ink, but all of this is in super duper time lapse because I had to get it all in and as it is, it's um, about 16 minutes long, almost 16 minutes long. Which I didn't think was, I mean, not too shabby for like a video showing two different things. So this one's going to be a little bit longer and then next week probably won't be quite as long. But I'll have the color, what I, how I color it in next week's video. So I use a couple tools for the sketch. You could, you can see clearly enough what I'm using, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> so my, my tools were a, just a regular number two HB lead pencil. I used a 0.7 millimeter refillable Bic pencil. I like the refillable pencils, particularly for details. Every now and then I'll get my pencil super, super sharp and I'll just use a regular wood pencil. But I like the idea of the refillable ones because, well, I mean, I like the wooden pencils, definitely, but because of the detail I can get and because I can refill it, I, maybe it's not better for the environment anymore. I need to look, I don't know. If anybody knows, let me know, because I will try to train myself back on using solely the regular pencil if it's better for the environment. I don't know which one is. At any rate, I, I also do have a 0.9 millimeter refillable Bic, or it might not be Bic, I don't know what brand it is, but I don't use it as much simply because the reason why I'm using the mechanical pencil is because I do like to get that finer detail. It kind of feels good to write with. If I'm just writing words, my handwriting's terrible anyway, but it'll be slightly neater with that 0.9 millimeter. <sighs> Listen to me sipping my tea. Everybody's gone to bed for the night. The dogs are asleep. My partner's asleep. So <laughs> I'm just kind of chilling. I'm going to take it easy. I've got 15 minutes. Let's see me waste the time talking about my delicious tea. It's just a green tea. It's either green tea or white tea. It's something that my mom bought and gave me. She, she loves to give me tea and I love to receive tea. So there's that. <laughs> I'm drawing on the, um, actually this was such a great deal. I, when I was still living up in Northern Illinois, I didn't have a lot of money. I still don't, but I really didn't have a lot of money. So when I was cruising through, I think it was like the Michaels up there, it might've been the Hobby Lobby, but more likely it was the Michaels. And they had this 18 by 24, I think it is. It's right next to me and I just read it a minute ago, but <laughs> don't expect me to read it and remember anything. <laughs> but, um, I got it. It was like $18.99 originally, but it was discounted. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I think maybe the cover was 
is is bent a little bit, but like the inside, the paper is perfectly fine. I got it for like 472 for two markdowns. So that's a tip for you guys if you're trying to save money. Cruise the clearance area because you never know. I mean, sometimes it's like obscure stuff that you're probably never going to use or highly specialized for certain types of art, but you might get lucky and find like just strike gold like I did. So that's the kind of paper that I'm using. It's just a regular drawing paper. It's nothing real heavy. In fact, whenever I tried col the coloring traditionally, which I ended up thinking, duh, I'm doing red bubble. This whole thing is for red bubble and that stuff, Etsy's gonna be where I have the traditional art. So it would make more sense for me to do the digital coloring on red bubble anyway. However, when I did, I did try to paint it and the paper buckles. So it's, it's regular drawing paper. I figured that would happen. I, I was prepared for it. So it wasn't like a total loss. I just wasted a bit of time, <laughs> but it's great for sketching and it, it works really well with the ink. And I had have actually used it for some other projects and it works well with like Sharpie and markers. I think it might bleed through, but it worked okay for that. So anyway, that that's what I'm drawing on. Other things that I use, you know, I've got my protractor from high school. I've got, gosh, a menagerie of rulers that I've picked up over the years. I actually do still have my high school ruler, but I have picked up additional ones because I don't know, I'm crazy. I guess I'm collecting rulers. I have a compass that I use. That's what I use to draw the circle for my head. That is a, <laughs> my blue dragon personification. That's obviously not what I look like. <laughs> I don't look like a drawing. It'd be like cool world. And then what else? Oh, I have a circle template. My, my dad was a land surveyor and for a while he was, he would do private surveys, bring in a little extra cash when we were younger. And when he quit doing the private surveys, I just glommed onto like most or all of his drafting tools. Like I've got like an, an S curve or a C curve or whatever it's called. I think it's a French curve. I've got a couple of those. I got just all of them. I even had like a stencil for the letters. I digress. Look how much time I've already spent talking about. Office supplies. I love office supplies. There's something wrong with me. Like, I don't even know. I just love them. And then, and then I have some erasers that I use. I think most of them are Pentel. I can't remember what the the triangle eraser I used to have the logos rubbed off of it and it's almost circular so I don't remember what brand that was. Most of them are just uh, high polymer Pentel erasers. So that's, those are the materials that I'm using for the sketch portion. The inking portion, I use my regular Itsumi Ink 60. I would like to find out what the ingredients are. I know that it's made out of, I believe, pine charcoal. And I think when you buy it liquid, it's just the pine charcoal mixed with water. I know if you get it solid, for sure it has some kind of bone meal or, or something inside of it. It's, I don't think it's gelatin, but something to solidify it and hold it together in a bar. But I think if you buy it liquid, it doesn't have any animal products in it, which is something that concerns me. But I don't know. I have to write the company. Don't, don't take that as a fact. I have been wanting to write the company and ask, but I don't know if I should write the letter in English or have someone translate it or Google translate it. It's made in Japan, so I don't want to insult anybody by just using, you know, Google Translate making no sense. So, I don't know. I'll find out one of these days. Anyway, the pen is a Sanji style nib. I've talked about both the ink and the Sanji nib in the past video, I think. I think. So with the Sumi ink, it's a water base, as I just mentioned, and I keep for some reason forgetting that it's the ink that works with Copics or any kind of alcohol, well, not any, but it, I, theoretically, I've only used it with Copics and it works fine and it won't smudge. If you try to do <laughs> what I have done a couple times, which I can do it and kind of use the weeping to my advantage because it will, if you like try to use, even if you're using like India inks, which is what I paint with a lot of times because I suck at watercolor and I don't have the patience. I mean, I do, I don't, no, I don't. I'm not even gonna pretend I have the patience. But if you're gonna use the Sumi ink, combine it with Copics, or experiment and see if the other alcohol brands work with it. Otherwise, use India ink if you're going to be painting watercolor over it or if you're going to be 
doing something with like the colored India inks because that that's the kind of ink that won't weep whenever you paint over it. So I just wanted to kind of talk about this because I always found it fascinating in my art classes. Well, not, not every class brought him up. But one of the art classes that I had taken, the uh, I was using a compass. I, I like to start my heads with <laughs> with circles. It's just something that I I've done for a long time, and it really helps me make sure that the head is proportioned correctly. Uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, well not authors, I haven't read his manga series, but one of my favorite uh, manga illustrators that are you know that's a U.S. citizen is Mark Crilly. I've purchased all three of his books, which I highly recommend because he doesn't just, he just goes into a lot of details. I'm not being, this is obviously not sponsored, he has no idea who I am or of my existence, but I, I highly suggest them. But he actually goes into detail why, you know, why you place those and, and you'll see why the circle is so important and, and breaking down the body into shapes. Of course, you gotta then, you know, know why you're making the shapes. But anyway, I digress. So when I was taking some of my earlier art history courses, it had been brought up about Rembrandt at that time. I keep confusing him with Vermeer for some reason. I can't remember, maybe they're the same nationality. Anyway, people cannot draw a, a perfect circle. I think it has something to do with the way our hands, arms are made. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, there was a myth that there was one person who could do it. And I guess a lot of artists strove to achieve creating a perfect circle. And Rembrandt was one of them. And in one of his famous, or in, in his, I don't know how many self-portraits he did. I didn't think he did a lot, but it's been so long since I've taken classes that I can't remember. However, I know that in one of his famous self-portraits, Rembrandt is seated and in the background, he's toying with that idea of the perfect circle. There are there's either one or two circles behind yeah, so I always, I remember that story from one of my professors and I just thought that was fascinating. So th that's where there's a connection and the connection <laughs> for me was using the compass to make a circle for the heads so that I can make a better shaped head. <laughs> it all makes sense in my head. <laughs> so I guess that's all that matters. Maybe other people, have, you know, could draw similar conclusions. I don't know. So I just thought I would sh share that with you guys. You know, while you're looking at a subpar artist, you can think about an amazing artist. <laughs> but anyway, I just, that's something that I thought I would mention. So the dimensions of this image, if anyone out there does art themselves and is planning to open up a Redbubble account, the dimensions for it need, for the banner at the top, need to be 2400 by 600 pixels. And since I was choosing to have my image be 500 DPI, I had to scale things up because I don't like to draw really teeny tiny. So this actual picture is 18 by 4.5 inches. So that's the size that I'm working in. And then that'll scale down to the, depending on whatever your DPI is. I specifically chose that again so that it could scale down to the, um, 2400 by 600 pixels. So what's going on in the image? <laughs> I wrote notes for myself. I've said that I've recorded this three times. I wrote notes and I'm following them, but they're just like a bullet. So I'm not like, you know, reading it word per word. So the idea behind this is to, you know, have the self-portrait, but also to capture a little bit of whimsy with the characters kind of cascading, <laughs> dancing out of my head and dancing in my hair. This is really freaking weird. <laughs> but more so, the idea was to really give it kind of like a Word of Wednesday, ethereal. I wanted to feel very dreamlike and unreal while still ethereal. I kind of like that word. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I really wanted it to be kind of fantastical, not, not real feeling kind of dreamy and I hope I captured that a little bit. When the color gets in, it's kind of cool. I, I like the finished product. I, I mean, it could be better, 
but I, I'm happy with it. I think it's kind of different. It's, it's outside of my comfort zone and I really worked hard to make sure that the colors all meshed well together. But I won't talk much about that because I'm going to talk about that in the other video. So that's what's going on. If you're not familiar with my comic, links are down in the bottom and there are character descriptions. All of those characters have their descriptions up. The dragon is Odysseus, so you, my character description doesn't have the dragon form, it has the human form. He's under a curse. So. And I do fix him. He's so poorly proportioned, but I do fix him once it gets into the Photoshop version, which you'll see next week. So yeah, there's that. Actually, I, wow, I managed to get all my points out and, and get this organized. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this week's question of the week, because I was talking a little bit about Vermeer, I'm curious to know who is your favorite artist? Is it one of the grand masters like Raphael or Leonardo? Or is it someone a little more modern, uh, Warhol or Coons or? You know, is it an internet artist? You know, I, I like that uh, Emily Artful, she's pretty funny. Or, you know, like a, mostly they're women. Oh, I, I like that one guy, D'Angelo. That's a dude, or he's a dude. Yeah, I watch a couple channels. Drawing with Waffle, she's one of my favorites. I, I watch her, she's so entertaining. Anyway, but yeah, answer that down below. Um, If you like the videos, please subscribe, like it. Ding, 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 ling bell. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week and keep on trucking.